Howdy. We're back on the couch with Scott. Yeah, it's been a long time. I know. What have you been doing? Racing. Racing what? Digital cars. Oh, digital cars? That's smart. So we're here to talk about a topic today that is pretty controversial and it affects a lot of people. And this is in related to the GM plant closures and their killing off of a lot of cars, which we saw Ford do this but not close their plants. Right, and they kind of monkey see, monkey do. They want to make more trucks. They want to make more trucks, and they want to make more money. That's the most important thing. So what was the immediate reaction when they closed these plants? The media and the people went nuts. Yeah. And their stock prices went up. And I think that's kind of what we're going to touch on in this video is there's, there's two sides to this. There's the human side, and the human side is people are pawns for big business. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're just disposable for the most part. When things are going great, they're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna do well, but when things go wrong, you're the first thing to go. Yeah, but they've been going wrong for how long with them? That's a good point. I think you said something like, when's the last time People GM. lusted over a GM? Right. I mean, what, I, I honestly, what, the G8? Maybe? I mean, car-wise, G8? Right. Yeah. Or SS, I guess. Yeah. Would be. And they didn't sell. Which is, I can't believe it. I, I know. It's really, really odd. Uh, obviously, you got to rule out the Camaro and the Corvette because right. that's, that's the only thing left. Yep. So now you kill off a bunch of cars. And uh, to be fair to GM, not all those cars were shit. You know, they put, pff, they put a ton of money into the Volt. A ton. This was a big car for them, especially the first generation. The second one... You could tell they were cutting costs. The new LaCrosse, I know it's a Buick and all that, but that's a serious car. But it's, it, again, it's more indicative of their mismanagement of the brands more than anything. Uh, I think the second thing with GM is, I said this to you in text, is the GM car list and truck list or SUV list is kind of like the Denny's. It's like a the Denny's. Denny's and Applebee's, that was amazing. It is, it really is. It's like they're, they're, it is like a Denny's menu. It's comfort food, low quality. And it's, it's designed for people that, and I, not, I don't mean this to be disrespectful, but it's for a lot of people that don't know any better and are just, maybe that's all they know. They grew up with GM, they right, grew up they with Chevy. they have to buy something American. Right. And they buy this stuff and a lot of it, as you and Tom, Tom talked about, is just garbage. Long term, they just don't last. They're making so many disposable products. And when you make disposable products, the people behind them become disposable as well. And that's mm -hmm. what you start to see. Like from this to all the technology and stuff. Well, I can see them killing the cruise. Yeah. I mean, that thing is junk. Yeah. But the Impala, and, but you would think they would want a full-size sedan that they could sell to police. I mean, think about how many cars they can sell. They don't have anything. That, what, what do the police have? Tahoes? Yeah, they're all switching SUVs. Right. There's no cars they can buy. So this is the thing. Um, you start to kill off all these cars because people are buying SUVs and CUVs. And you can easily blame Ford, you can blame Chevy, GM, whatever. But the real reason is people continue to buy these. They're buying these high margin SUV-ish car things that's such a big trend and you're killing off cars like, like this thing. This is a perfect example. This is the new uh, V or whatever the V60, hell it is. V60, whatever S it is. That 60 S Volvo. Yeah. I'm sorry. I can't remember all the letters. This is the new S60, <coughs> and I haven't been in one of Volvo's newer cars that's based on the new architecture and all that. The only thing I drove was the XC90, the XC60, and the XC40, all SUVs, and they all have problems because they're big, they're heavy. You have over 300 horsepower and you can't tell. They don't particularly ride or handle great. And you get in here, this is one of the best Volvos I've ever driven. And it's a car. And the sad thing is people aren't going to buy it because they're going to buy the SUV over right. it. And even though they're not better, that's the trend. So you have to kind of blame the weird consumerism that's going on for the death of a lot of these products. And if you're somebody that's working in a factory that's getting cut loose, and I, I was in jobs like this and we've you know, I told you about this back in the Motorola days, back in the tech days. Every day I go, go, went into work, people thought this was, it was just understood. Today could be my last day at work because everything was so mismanaged. 
It depended on who the manager of the week was, who the leadership of the, the week was, and the first thing they were going to cut was people because reorganization, doing the right thing, saving money, not making shit, that was not important. It was about trying to keep the shareholders happy, making as much money as possible, and that meant everybody was along for the ride. And if you're a factory worker in Canada or the U.S. that just got laid off, I'm going to tell you the best thing you can do. Don't listen to us. Don't listen to anything else. Don't listen to the media. Take a trip to Detroit. Go to the Renaissance Center, GM's headquarters, and all you need to do is spend 30 minutes walking around that building to know where their heart and minds are and the whole idea of that company. So the other part is what you started to talk about earlier is like the whole what Trump said, what the, the politicians are saying. How could you do this? We bailed you out with billions of right. dollars and now you're going to pull out of these factories. That hurts the economy. Like Canada is saying that they're going to lose five to ten billion dollars out of their economy because you close a factory wow. you cl not only are the people laid off but all the parts suppliers because mm -hmm. obviously gm doesn't make all their own parts the parts suppliers are going to go out of business they're going to lay people off people are not going to have the money to buy shit. the government's going to have to has to subsidize this stuff and it's going to cause a ton of pain initially but the the issue is this is a rollover effect from the last bailouts, if you would have let them fail when they should have failed for their own mismanagement, they should have. People would have suffered greatly. The economies would have taken a huge hit, but it might have, it may have given people the opportunity to go to work for companies that actually cared, that put more effort into what they were doing, made better decisions. Now you have to do that. You just have to accept this company; they're not doing the right thing. Well, look at they were they were trying to get in with Fiat, yeah, long time ago. And then they sold it off for some ridiculous loss. And I mean, they probably would have been way better off if they would have gotten with them. Yeah, probably. And you just don't know. And this is the part of, this is the most difficult part to swallow with the private sector. You know, it's great because they supply a lot of jobs and that it's a huge boost to the economy. But at the same time, when things go wrong and they're so big, it can have a devastating effect on everything. And I think it, the, the big thing that I want to say was that the takeaway and a really positive side is you're losing between Ford and Chevy or GM pff, at least 600, 700,000 units a year at the worst case. That's a lot of vehicles that are not going to get sold. Where do you think people are going to go? They're going to go to the companies that are putting a lot of right. energy into their cars. Like this, the new Toyota, Toyota Mazda, Mazda ha, you know, even though the new Accord isn't selling well, <clears throat> take a look at how much energy they put into that car. I mean, these are really great products, and I'm not kidding. I mean, yeah, I'm down on newer cars, but they spent a ton of energy on them. And now's the time, if you're somebody that is, you, all you want to do is buy GM or Ford, now's the time to say, fuck you. Go to another company. Because, you know, go to the companies that care about the products they're making, and even like the Chevy and Ford products, like they're eco sport, they're cheap CUVs, they're Chinese, they're Korean, they're not any more American than anything else. But uh, hey, at least GM's bringing the Blazer back. Oh my God. You know, they, they should kill GMC. If they're going to kill something, kill it. Why do you need to sell the same thing that Chevy's selling with just a different badge and a, a higher trim level? I mean, it's ridiculous. They have too many things right. of the same thing. It's, that's a really good point. Yeah, I, and especially I, it was really bad when you had all the manufacturers before. I mean, what did they have? Like each Chevy, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, they all had the same car, right. but different. Yeah. I mean, what? Well, like yeah. we were just saying, you go, go to a different manufacturer. My dad, as long as I was live alive and before that, when he was, you know, ever since he started driving, GM everything. Never had anything but a GM product. He was looking for a used car, you know, I don't, in the, in the mid 90s. He had a friend that worked at Cadillac and that did all of our work on our cars, you know, when I was a little kid before I started doing all that stuff. And my dad's like, you know, the guy's like, this car is a piece of crap, whatever it was. And my dad's like, what do you recommend? The guy points to his garage. What's in there? Two Hondas. Cadillac mechanic. Won't even, he's like, I wouldn't touch one. And that's what changed for him? Yeah, that's and then he, he bought a Honda Accord and he that hasn't had so. anything but Honda since then, which is amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's strange how that works. And I think, you know, that's, that's the main part of this topic is, you know, don't be afraid to go outside your comfort zone. You know, consumers are stupid. The, the, the mass consumer is dumb. They don't even understand what they're doing half the time. 
you know, and, and this is a side effect of it really, you know, it's really easy to blame these companies, but they're just doing what the customer right, demand exactly. is. And they're very short-sighted and companies are always going to be short-sighted that way. They're going to go where the money is. Right. If, and, you know, if you're working for one of these companies that is like GM that is behind, get with one of the new companies, find a different outlet, start your own company. Just don't be afraid that this is the end of your end of your life. And if like the politicians, don't be so reactive. The people are going to hurt. But you can't go and bail out these companies. You can't keep make, letting them make the own, their own mistakes over and over again with taxpayer money this time around. I mean, you, you just got to you got to suffer through it and, and move on. And I, this is just the most telling story of it. Now, GM saying that they're going to put, they're they're trying to reinvest billions of dollars, like into, six billion dollars into autonomous and electric cars. cars. Yeah. Why with the autonomous cars? And the the autonomous cars thing is really interesting because, uh, Kraft John Kraftcheck he was the former CEO at Hyundai, before he left when the fuel mo- mo- fuel economy scandal came up, mm-hmm. when they misrated the fuel economy, he left and went to I believe True Car, and then after True Car he got hired by. Uh, Google, which is now Waymo, and Waymo is Google's elect- or, you know, electric car slash autonomous car division. And he came out in November, and he said that you don't, I'm paraphrasing, but you don't know something until you know something. So he didn't really realize, they didn't realize until they started learning more about the autonomous car project and getting into it, how little they knew about it. And he said, the first thing he said is that it's going to take a minimum of 20 years before these cars can truly operate in all conditions. Now, they're going to work in cities that are in good climates. Like, th- that's the main market. If you're in a, a, an urban area where you can get rid of cars, because cars are shitty in the city anyway, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to take over mass transit mm-hmm. and, like, public transportation with those. But as a regular car, they're going to be a complete mixed bag for at least 20 years because they can't drive in the snow the rain yeah, i was gonna say what's gonna happen when it's snowing out and all the sensors get full of snow he flat out said it's not gonna work and it may never work with existing technology so that's the truth of it and this is coming from the leading people of autonomous cars so do you think gm is somehow going to figure out a problem for like weather do you think they're going to figure out a problem with electric cars in the next 20 years this is a long-term investment this is not going to fix anything right now I mean, that's all I'm going to say about it. I mean, we could go on and on. I mean, the whole electric car thing is a totally separate topic. Well, I, back to the autonomous cars. Look at that recent Tesla crash that yeah. was on autopilot, right. 80 mile an hour, rear-ended a park, uh, stalled car, whatever it was. Oh, we just don't have programming to avoid stopped objects at highway speeds. Well, how can you get away with having that in a car, period, then? Right. Because to me, that's a hell of a lot more dangerous than avoiding a pedestrian at 20 miles an hour. Yes, you need to avoid all of it, but it's either all or it's nothing. I, I agree with you. And I think some of it is it's the political climate we're in. There's this phobia of regulation again. And I'm not saying regulations are a great thing, but there's certain things you need to put your foot down on. And it's like any company. If you let some company run wild, like kind of like this GM situation, you just let them you know, do this shit. You give them the money to do it on top of it. Right, yeah. They're, they're going to do whatever they want. And this is a clear example of they're doing what's best for their company and not anything else. So the, elect- the autonomous car thing is these companies are lobbying hundreds of millions of dollars to deregulate testing on this. They want these cars on the road. And in some cases... Because they know people will buy them. Because right. it's, it's the new thing. Yeah. This savage geese, I hate them. I hate them. I'm going to show you how to get back at him on Yelp and all that other stuff. Hey, as long as they got their likes and shares, who cares? Right, that's all it's about. Follow me, bro. Follow me. Like this, subscribe. Uh, tell your friends. Tell your friends. Share this with your friends, your family. Uh, you buy stream my, it on your car while you're driving. Stream it in your car. Buy my merchandise. Wear it to public places. Make me millions. Okay. <laughs> Our, your goal is a million a month. A million a month. That's my new goal. And then I'm going to buy SUVs, a big-ass house, and then I'm just going to make videos do, about that. Yeah, do video, selfie video, selfie, selfie videos. cam videos. I'm in my tub. My butler's bringing me my, my food. I'm going to go to one of my 20 different bedrooms I don't use. 
That's that's my goal. You can have an Apple room. You can have a Samsung room, an right. LG room. Oh, it's going to be sponsored too. I'm going to be so big that every company is going to want to sponsor me. You have to have get like the the Asian the imp sorry the imports have the stickers with all the yeah. sponsors. You can have that down your arm. That I mean that's life goals, man. Like I I'm n I'm not going to be anybody unless I'm sponsored by everybody. <laughs> I need everything free. Anyway, that's the end of this. See you later. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh. Sorry. Say that. Sorry.